Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this ReadyGamingTech.com video, we're going to be discussing and analysing tech news which, as usual, has popped up the past 24 or so hours. And we're going to start things out with AMD and Arcturus. Arcturus is probably one of those code names that is very familiar to you. We've heard about it for some time now, and indeed, there has been a lot of speculation of what it could be in reference to. Is it a new graphics architecture? Well, no, that was actually shot down by an AMD employee. While there were reports originally that uh, Arcturus was a next generation uh, architecture from the company, an AMD employee went on record and said, no, it's actually a chip that we're designing. So then most of the rumors started swirling that Arcturus was actually for the next generation consoles, either for the Xbox uh, Scarlet or for the PlayStation 5. Well, today we actually may be solving the mystery of what Arcturus is. So why is it that we're so confident that Arcturus is a branch of the Vega architecture and not something different? Well, there's a couple of reasons. The first of which is the AMD GPU LLVM shader compiler code recently received an update. It was a couple of days ago. And the update included a GFX908 target. So GFX9, for those who don't know, actually is reference to Vega with RDNA slash Navi slash whatever you want to call it being GFX10 and you can kind of go backwards in history through AMD's various architectures. So that obviously tells us that if you have an entry which is 908, then yes, it's going to be Vega and not Navi. Secondly, this entry also had references to things such as ECC, which would be a card which you would assume would be for workstations, right? Now, there's been another update, and this one actually was a patch which popped up yesterday, which is uh, July the 15th, in case you're watching this in several days' time. Uh, the patch is 084-102, and it is on the freedesktop.org archives. So there's a couple of chips uh, that we'll mention first. The first of which is chip underscore Raven. And it is, as you can quite clearly see here, AMD IS APU. And we know what Raven is, so I'm not going to go deep into that. And we also, of course, know what Narve is because, well, it's a released product now. And the PS de Resistance, of course, is the chip underscore Arcturus where there are a couple of different entries. Now, while it does appear to be an architecture which is based on Vega 20, it's not exactly Vega 20. Uh, there are over 102 patches which have so far been discovered uh, to the AMD GPU kernel driver for this card. And what's really interesting is that it doesn't appear to have a 3D engine. It's not a 3D engine. So what that basically means is it's an accelerator without the ability to render 3D graphics. Basically, this thing is for compute-orientated tasks. Uh, according to the code, and this is uh, thanks to Foronix.com, the code is a reveal of a VCN 2.5 video core next implementation. And there are three different IDs, and I've just mentioned those, that have been added to Arcturus. Unfortunately, there's not a huge amount of information on, say, for example, the number of compute units or the specifications of the GPU at large, but it is interesting and does seem to tie in rather nicely with what I've been hearing through the grapevine. So if you cast your minds back a couple of months, uh, actually back to March, I did release a couple of videos which were exclusives regarding uh, RDNA, well, back then, of course, we only knew it as Narve. And one of the things that I was mentioning was that Narve would have, or rather the next generation would have uh, ray tracing, which of course has been confirmed. And one of the other goals of RDNA, the first generation, was to improve things such as geometry performance and just general graphics performance and optimizations, which of course has turned out to be true. However, there was also a small other thing that I discussed, although I didn't do, go too deep into it because my source didn't have super amounts of information. But I touched on the fact that AMD wanted to start branching out architectures depending upon the scenario. So if you think about it, 
RDNA is pretty spiffy when it comes to graphics. Uh, just for the sake of argument, if you take a Radeon 7 GPU and you compare that against the RX 5700 XT, yes, there is a definitely a performance difference, but one can argue that 10 or 20%, depending upon the application as well as the um, resolution that you're playing, isn't exactly a huge increase in performance. Like, I don't think many people would want to buy a Radeon 7 over a RX 5700 XT if you are only gaming. You can argue that the extra VRAM would be nice, but then you're also charged a double the amount of cash for the privilege of owning a Radeon 7. That's one of the reasons, supposedly, that Radeon 7 is going EOL. Although, at the time I'm recording this, it's not still been officially confirmed by AMD. They've basically just said that uh, supply is plentiful, which doesn't seem to coincide with reality because a lot of stores are showing Radeon 7 to be, well, not available. It's out of stock. Uh, getting back to the topic, though, but if you also take a 5700 XT and compare it against a Radeon 7, for example, in certain tasks which are compute-focused, the Radeon 7 definitely pulls ahead, simply because the Vega architecture is really good at that. So I wouldn't be surprised if we do start seeing this approach from AMD, and it makes sense in the grand scheme of things, have GPUs which are good at, well, graphics for gaming, and obviously also for consoles, and then having a different, uh, I guess it would be an entirely different architecture, specifically resolved around the purpose of providing compute. If memory serves, um, my source did say it was going to be more of like an ASIC type of thing, so it was going to be very custom depending upon what the client wanted. You can go ahead and check that video out. You can simply search uh, Navi Ray Tracing or something like that on the channel. It will pop up. I'll try to remember to link it in the description of this video. But either way, uh, it kind of makes sense to me that Arcturus is going to be this. It's not a brand new architecture, and so this basically means that no, it's not for the PlayStation 5, no, it's not for the next generation Xbox, it is not a brand new like architecture. Instead, we know from AMD's own roadmaps, for graphics anyway, that they are very much sticking to RDNA. And don't forget, uh, AMD have also said when it comes to RDNA, they feel that it's very much like Zen at the moment. Um, to clarify what I mean by that, that they have a roadmap in their mind of what they want to do with different generations of RDNA, and so we're going to continue to see performance increases, new features, and other shiny things added as the GPU continues to evolve. The next story I want to discuss is actually from DigiTimes, who are usually fairly reliable when it comes to their sources, at least in my experience. Uh, as we all know, AMD have recently launched the Ryzen 3000 series of CPUs, with the obvious exception of the 3950X. Intel also have the uh, 9900K and other processors which are not exactly doing well in many applications against the Ryzen 3000s, and we are also expecting HEDT processors, new HEDT processors, from uh, both components as well, with Cascade Lake most likely coming to X299, at least that's what I'm hearing, and well, the third generation of Threadripper will be released by AMD. Uh, from what I've been told regarding Threadripper, it will be up to 64 cores, and I've, ex I've explained that quite extensively in the past from a couple of sources. So, the DigiTimes article uh, actually tells us that Intel and AMD are planning to release top end desktop CPUs in October and this actually comes from rather reliable sources. So then this gives us several different options. So let's start things with AMD. The first and only option you can really have would be Threadripper third generation because the Ryzen 9 3950X release date has been confirmed by AMD to be September so unless it's being postponed, and it's just not gonna be, then the only processors left would be the third generation Threadripper. And it's quite interesting because I have actually been told that Threadripper might be coming a little earlier than what I had anticipated. 
I'd originally been told it was the fourth quarter, end of this year kind of thing. So maybe uh, another source told me that it could be earlier. So maybe that is actually it. Maybe we're going to be seeing it in October. For Intel, there's a couple of options. The first is the one I just mentioned, Cascade Lake, which would basically be facing directly off against a potential 64-core uh, Threadripper processor. I wouldn't be surprised, and this is not based upon a source, I just want to stress this, but this is just me speculating. I wouldn't be surprised if we see the 64-core CPU launch later, and instead AMD launch processors with lower core counts first, and then slowly fill out the product lineup, because it makes some sense, uh, particularly if they feel that the 7nm production is being a little bit strained, or maybe they just want to do it for marketing purposes. Who the heck knows? I'm also going to be very curious if a 64-core SKU actually gets launched, what the heck are we going to be seeing in memory channel configurations? Anyway, so from Intel then, Cascade Link could be one particular option, or it could also be Comet Link. I'm less certain about Comet Lake, though, because there have been a couple of roadmaps that have leaked, and Comet Lake doesn't look like it's launching this year. It looks instead like it's going to be the first quarter of next year. Then again, think about it from Intel's perspective. What would you do? I mean, wouldn't you really want to get out Comet Lake as quickly as possible? We can argue all day long that Intel are going to lose in the core count war, but if they can crank the clock frequencies high enough, let's say 5 GHz plus, and have 10 processor cores, and also launch at a decent price, I don't think they're going to beat AMD in every application, not by a long shot, but they're certainly going to do a lot better than what the 9900K is currently doing, and I wouldn't be surprised if games especially, and applications which really push single-thread performance, uh, do tend to favor Intel a little bit. So once again, I'm not saying that this is going to be a win for Intel, but it's going to be Intel scoring some wins with Comet Lake, which is, yeah, as I said, much better than what they're doing now. And finally, the RTX 2080 Ti Super. Goodness, that name is not exactly smooth, is it? It doesn't like roll off the tongue. Uh, but a chap from Tweaktown, hopefully I'm going to pronounce his name correctly, it's Anthony Greffa. Uh, he was recently speaking to uh, a chap at NVIDIA, and according to what uh, he was told uh, by Mr. Fisher, Mr. Jeff Fisher over at NVIDIA, there will not be an RTX 2080 Ti Super. Um, he was asked the question direct, and he got a direct answer that no, this won't happen. You can take this a couple of different ways, though. The first of which is that they are not currently planning an RTX 2080 Ti Super. The second is that no, definitely not going to happen, that they're happy as they are. The third option is that Jeff simply did not know that NVIDIA were working on a 2080 Ti Super, which would be questionable, or he was lying, which I also don't know if he would be. So, if you think about it, though, the existence of this card, a uh, theoretical RTX 2080 Ti Super, would really eat into the sales of the RTX uh, Titan, or Titan RTX to give it its proper name. Uh, the Titan has 4,608 CUDA cores, and this is uh, in comparison to 4,352 uh, CUDA cores of the RTX 2080 Ti, and obviously, we also have less memory as well. There's 24 gigabytes on a 384-bit bus compared to 11 gigabytes on a 352-bit bus. We can imagine an RTX 2080 Ti Super would probably not have the raw compute performance of an RTX, uh, sorry, of a Titan RTX. Uh, maybe they would also go with a somewhat reduction, a small reduction in CUDA cores. Uh, but they would also probably only have 12 gigabytes of memory rather than uh, a full 24 gigabytes of memory. But I don't think they're going to do it. I think that they're going to just kind of keep how things how they are for now. I might be totally wrong on that, um, but I think NVIDIA are quite happy with the current lineup. So what do you all think? Do you think we're going to see an RTX 2080 Ti Super? 
or instead are Nvidia going to not release the card or call it something entirely different, such as the RTX 2080 Ti Ultra. Hopefully you've enjoyed today's video, if you did then definitely subscribe to the channel and also click on the bell icon because subscribing as we all know is no longer enough in the land of YouTube and also consider dropping a like on the video as well. Definitely comment in the video, I'm very curious to know what people think about the RTX 2080 Ti Super, goodness that name. I'm really hoping it doesn't get released simply because of the name alone is going to be super duper fun for everyone to say. Uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments below whether you think that that card is actually going to see the light of day. And you can also find us, of course, on social media, which is linked in the description of this very video, along with Amazon affiliate links and Patreon. Amazon are currently doing their like Prime Day thing. So, you know, if you're going to be purchasing something from that, consider using one of the affiliate links because it gives us a few pennies and, of course, doesn't cost you anything. But take care of yourselves. Have a great day. Bye for now.